Hey guys, uh, something I wanted to talk about real quick today is a topic that I uh, admittedly know very little about, but has kind of fascinated me. And it's the idea of using these uh, strange uh, little crystal objects to uh, create uh, effects with your photography. Uh, now, uh, crystal ball photography, uh, sometimes called lens ball photography, uh, I think a lot of people have seen these pictures. It's it's a ball like this, but without, you know, these little faceted uh, sections to it. It's just a regular sort of smooth uh, spherical shaped crystal ball. Uh, I don't have one of those. I have this with, uh, with all of these uh, little faces to it. So it gives you a different effect. But uh, the crystal ball or lens ball uh, photography is one of these things where it visually distorts and flips uh, the scene in front of your camera and gives you this uh, weird kind of effect. And you can do this with something that you can purchase or even, I've seen people do it with water droplets, you know, just macro photography and water droplets kind of get the same effect. Part of the scene is just kind of flipped over and, uh, and it, I don't know, it just looks kind of cool. But there are other ways to create light bending visual effects and there are a lot of products available just for this purpose. So I decided to order a set that included uh, this uh, triangular shaped crystal it's uh, like a prism and uh, and this prismatic uh, ball the ones I purchased each have a quarter inch uh, threaded socket here and that allows you to mount it to something like this this is an adapter that you can attach to a camera or a small rig thing for video this one's actually made by small rig and I like it a lot so if you've got an accessory arm or some other type of bracket, you can try mounting one of these to your camera. Now I can see how a subtle use of these could be effective with some types of portraiture. And then, you know, portraiture is what I do most of all. But I was curious to see what I could do with uh, these on a typical photo walk scenario. Now what I discovered while messing around with these crystals is that I would place the crystal in front of the lens like this and just kind of move it around until I saw something, uh, you know, through the viewfinder or through the LCD uh, that looked interesting. It's not like I could really predict what I was going to get before I put uh, one of these prisms in front of the lens. So I just kind of moved things around. Uh, until I said, oh, that looks cool, and then I clicked the shutter button. Most of the time with this one, uh, I was getting reflections uh, mixed in with the direct view of the scene. So in other words, if I had the prism like this, then I would get the scene going that way, and then I'd get a reflection off of here. So depending on how I pointed this thing, that's what would happen. With the ball, I got more of a kaleidoscope effect. Now, most of the images I shot with the prism bar looked I would say to me like double exposures from one of my film cameras. That's the best way I could describe it. And the ones that I shot with a ball were interesting, but you know, at the same time, I was kind of like, you know, what exactly, what's a practical use of this? Because it kind of does one thing and it does that same one thing with every, uh, every time you put this in front of the lens. And that's the thing. One thing I think that would really frustrate me, especially with like the crystal ball effect is, uh, you know, I'd, be, I'd wonder if if I purchased something like that, if I if I purchased something that was basically a one trick pony, that it did the one thing, it flipped the image around and it you know distorted it in this one way. So a regular crystal ball would be kind of a cool effect, but I mean, at at, at some point, I'd wonder like how many times can I use this thing for pictures without uh, looking like I'm just repeating myself with sort of a gimmick. And maybe it's kind of the same with something like this. But the prism on the other hand gave me a few more options and I came to the conclusion that really the best way to use something like this is probably in a more subtle way, especially with portraiture. So in the long run, something like this is probably a little more useful than one of these or a regular crystal ball, in my opinion anyway. So those were daytime shots in kind of a drab color space, but uh, I decided to go out at night and try it with, you know, nighttime city lights and that kind of scenery. And that's where everything changed. That's where I really started seeing that, hey, this I could have fun with this. And I got shots that were, to me, a little more exciting. So here are some of the ones here. You can see this is, uh, you know, I'm in Austin right now, and this is a Capitol building. And, uh, and it's basically, I was just holding this prism up in front of the lens like this. And getting the lights to streak around in different ways, getting some neat reflections, uh, went down Congress, 
and you've got the Paramount Theater over there, and you've got stores and lights and lots of different things that you can uh, mess around with, with both uh, the kaleidoscope effect that you get out of this one and the more controlled light flares and reflections that you can get out of this one. You know, and if the question is, hey, Ed, you know, should I try this? Should I invest in these? I would say it depends on the set that you're looking at. Like these, and I'll provide links for these. These are, these pretty substantial. I mean, they feel good. They don't feel cheap by any means. And I, I like the effects that I got out of these. So these are a good option. I think definitely worth the money if you want to get in uh, to, you know, just messing around with light bending effects in front of your lens. But hey, if you don't want to spend the money on something like this, I'd encourage you to try other things like just use, just you find crystal around the house or just use uh, some other type of, you know, glassware or transparent material that you can just shoot through and just kind of bend the light a little bit and get different effects. Even reflective objects and colored glass and colored gels and things like that. Just try different things. Uh, you know, it's fun to put stuff in front of your lens and mess around like that. But uh, if you really want to get fancy, you can go for something like the Lens Baby products. They will distort the image in some way. That's a little more high end, but a lot of people like the effect that you get with Lens Baby products. They make this one neat little adapter and a set of uh, prismatic uh, crystals that you can attach to it that just it it holds it in front of your lens and these things are pretty small and you can just move them around and uh, and they'll hold it for you so you don't have to hand hold it out here like this and hold the camera in the other hand the reviews make it look like some people really like that product and some people don't like it that much but anyway i thought it might be cool to show you uh what i did with you know my first time using something like this i mean i've been shooting for like what over 30 years now and you'd think i would have already experimented with stuff like this but i i don't know i've always kind of avoided it thinking you know what's the use it's kind of gimmicky but I thought I'd give it a try and I actually did have some fun with it. I think I might try using at least uh, the uh, triangular shaped prism uh, in some future photo shoots. So hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Click like, hit that subscribe button, and uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. I'll see you next time.